this is my cheat sheet for Wednesday, March 14th. Rick Santorum, the big winner last night, right? Unbelievable. And honestly, whatever your thoughts surrounding Rick Santorum, I just feel bad for the man because somehow or another, he just never manages to win. He's like Rodney Dangerfield. He gets no respect, at least in terms of delegates. Over the weekend, he got the 30-point win in Kansas. 30 points. That's huge. That's an exclamation point. Yet Mitt Romney won everything else around that from the territories, Wyoming. And Mitt Romney ended up winning 39 delegates over the weekend to Rick Santorum's 35. Last night, Rick Santorum went into the South. Remember, this man's from Pennsylvania. New Gingrich is the Southerner, right? And he did it. He did it. He won Alabama. He won Mississippi. He made it happen. Here's the official news saying. Close only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and most importantly, primaries. Because... As a result of how close the margin was in Mississippi and Alabama, well, Newton Romney got a lot of delegates there too. Rick Santorum didn't get that many more. And here's the other fly in the ointment. Hawaii. Mitt Romney won that one by 20 points. And American Samoa, that's a winner-take-all thing. Mitt Romney got all nine delegates there. It's about the numbers again. Those pesky delegates, right? Real time. This is going to change from now because there are still coming out last night 17 delegates eight in alabama eight in uh in uh hawaii that haven't been issued along with one other one but real time mid romney actually won more delegates last time last night than rick santorum 42 rick santorum 35 new gingrich with 24 and this is why it continues to be a numbers problem for rick santorum He's got to win 65% of the outstanding delegates. And somehow or another, even when he's amassing these wins, he's falling further behind Mitt Romney in the overall delegate count. All right, enough of that for now. Move on to the stress test in the banks. You might have heard four names. You might be banking with one of them or doing business with one of them. The feds, they cleared 15 of the 19 largest financial institutions, but they picked on Snoopy. Yeah, MetLife did not pass the stress test, nor did Citibank, third largest in the country, Ally Financial, and this one really surprised me, SunTrust. Uh, in any event, here's what you need to do as a result of these four banks not passing the stress test yesterday. Absolutely nothing. This is not like what we went through four years ago. This is not anything that you need to worry about. If you hear that your bank didn't pass the stress test, I know the inclination may be, man, I might need to rethink doing business with them. No. These banks are going to be just fine. They're going to raise a little bit more money, go back to the government. The government is going to say, yeah, you passed the stress test, everything's fine. So you do not change or feel like you need to change anything if you do business with those banks. They will be just fine. I have complete confidence in that eventuality. Which, by the way, because you end up having big banks, most especially Bank of America, which is the one that I was most worried about, getting through the stress test yesterday, that's why you saw the stock market take off. Huge sigh of relief that Bank of America, which because they're the largest mortgage holder in the company, impacts our financial system more than anybody else in this country. Them getting through that door, that's good news for everybody. And more importantly, banks are looking forward going on uh, from here. All right, uh, iPad real quick. If you want to buy it in the stores, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock Friday morning. That's when it's going to happen. No word on how many are going to the individual stores, so there probably will be a little bit of a line scenario if you are so inclined. That's a cheat sheet for today. Enjoy yours. See ya manana.